Some cities are above ground and that's cool, but some cities are underground and they're amazing. Let's talk about that. Go! Good mythical morning. When Link and I were growing up, uh, anytime we had an opportunity to go underground, we did so. That usually consisted of us going into Justin McLeod's backyard and opening up uh, the manhole cover. <laughs> and uh, we pretty much just went down in the sewer. I'm not kidding. We would go down into the Don't sewer. Don't do that! And we'd sort of look at each other like, well, here we are again. There's poop. Uh, but that was as good as we could get. There were no underground cities where we come from. But today, right now, with us, you are gonna go into some underground cities that are pretty awesome, at least <laughs> mentally. Uh, and you'll probably look at a few pictures if we put them on the screen while we're talking about them. Starting with Derinkuyu. I said it right, maybe. Derinkuyu. Underground city in Turkey. This is an ancient uh, underground city built in the seventh to eighth centuries BC, so a long time ago. It's large enough to shelter approximately 20,000 people. So this is an underground city that can shelter 20,000 people. They got uh, churches, food stores, wow. livestock stalls, wine cellars, schools. What, why did they do this? Well, was, it, was it hot there or something? Apparently in this, this area of Turkey, there was just this really easy to dig into volcanic rocks. Porous? So it was just waiting to happen. I mean, looking at this, it looks like an ant maze. And then at the very bottom, is that like the water bed? Like the water creeps up into the homes? Yeah, yeah, and so they basically had air vents on top, they had like 15,000 air vents, they had all these places that they could get water, and then there were 600 access points that were all coming from the surface in people's like courtyards. Now this thing was built thousands of years ago, and then all of a sudden, in 1963, a dude finds an entrance to the city in his house. This is like a dream come true. Do you Whoa. understand what would happen to me if I found an underground city You'd fall in, in my house? Well, I wouldn't tell anybody, first of all. I'd keep it to myself and maybe some close friends. I might tell you about it. Put it on Airbnb? Put it on Airbnb and have 20,000 people at a time. 20,000 of your friends come over. This um, is amazing. Wow. I'm speechless. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that underground city really amazed me. Uh, anyway, this is uh, this is about as cool as it gets in terms of something you find in a house that know, you didn't I know it was to there. Check it out. Okay, so I've got one that doesn't have a cool diagram to go with it, but it's still pretty cool. It holds three hundred thousand people. Oh, that's more. Even more. Uh, the underground city under Beijing, known as Dixia Cheng, also known as the Underground Great Wall, uh, was built from nineteen sixty nine to nineteen seventy nine, basically as a massive bomb shelter. Uh, against possible nuclear war with Soviet Union, it was dug by hand by local all the residents of Beijing. That doesn't mean literally like like they yeah they had shovels, like shovels. and stuff, but it wasn't like automated. Right. This was this was a an a dictated endeavor. That's that, why hey, they call it the Great the Underground Great Wall because the Great right. Wall was constructed in a similar fashion. And you can still go into this thing now through one. There were ninety entrances to the complex uh, that few of those still remain. Uh, they were hidden in shops along the main street so that right. people could get down in there. But if you're lucky enough to get on one of these tours, if you're Chinese, you can't take one of the tours. And it's kind of difficult to know if Why? the tours are still running. I don't know, I think that's just a requirement. You have to be a foreigner. It's a restriction of theirs, yeah. It's a tourist at least attraction. From only. what I read. But you can still look at the old propaganda posters that are in there advising citizens to, quote, cover their mouths in the event of nuclear, chemical, or biological attack. That's cover what I would your, do. Cover your mouth. And when you, and when you sneeze, the, or when you're attacked by a nuclear weapon, just cover your cover mouth. Your mouth. Yeah, and they were equipped with restaurants, clinics, schools, theaters, factories, a roller skating rink. Oh, I'd be down there. I mean, they were ready in case- In my short shorts. Everybody had to go down into this thing. Yeah, so that's, yeah. Pr that's pretty cool. Roller skating has been scientifically proven to be a great way to keep people sane when they're underground. I already knew that, I did a science <laughs> project on that. Okay, uh, this is a little creepier than the first two examples. This is the Nazi underground city in Berlin, Germany. Under Berlin, probably. Yes, not it's, in it. It's under Berlin, and it was built by the Nazis. Got it. It consists of one thousand different interconnected bunkers. You can see the remains of Nazi murals. I don't know what's in a Nazi mural. Maybe like a 
Family of blonde-haired, blue-eyed people. I don't exactly know what that is. I'll have to, somebody will have to send us that. Please don't send Nazi murals on the internet. <laughs> Gosh, we that, don't want that. I just set a trap for somebody. <laughs> uh, this thing is complete with bathrooms, bedrooms, even a Winhizimmer, which is a uh, labor room for pregnant women. That's where the German women give birth. In a Pop them right out. Winhizimmer. Um, and it also includes Hitler's personal bunker called Führer Bunker. Can you visit this? Where he shot himself in the head. Whoa, really? This is where he committed suicide at the end of World War II. Uh, but the whole thing, most of it was demolished after World War II, uh, especially this, this bunker part. But you can still take tours of certain parts of it in the Secrets of Berlin underground tour. Ooh. You can see Nazi torture cells, escape tunnels, as well as places uh, used by anti-Nazi resistance and East German opposition uh, to escape. Uh, but I gotta tell you, it seems kind of creepy when you think about it in theory, but then when you see these like blow up dolls that they're using as props, it- It anesthetizes you to the- neutral. To the- re They need the, to upgrade their The dumbs. reality of it. They need to go to like Ripley's and look at some of the, the wax figures, or is that the wax museum? That's a different thing. They need to go to the wax museum and they need to have that kind of thing in there. I don't know, Rhett, but I do know that I'm going to Tunisia pretty soon what? because this underground city rocks my world. Uh, <laughs> Mat Mata, and I don't usually say rock my world. Is that why you laughed at me? Yeah. Because I said rock my world. You did. And you, you know that's not sincere? I've never heard you say that. I'm sincere. Really? My world is freaking rocked right now. <laughs> okay. Yours is about to be. Is that a play on words because it's a city dug into rocks? <laughs> no. Uh, the underground town of Mat Mata in southern Tunisia, which is the northernmost country in Africa. Already knew that. Um, troglodyte structures, caves. Basically, they dug. they would dig pits into the ground and make a courtyard, and then from within that pit, they would dig caves all around the pit, and then they would sleep in those, and they would give them relief from you know the African heat and things like that. No one had any knowledge of their existence. It fell, it fell out of knowledge until 1967. Oh, I forgot about that pit we dug, and then it with came, the homes around the inside. Came back into Just existence. Forgot about it. The hotel City Driss in Matamata was used as a filming location for Star Wars. It was Luke Skywalker's aunt and uncle's house. Yes. The interior shots and the courtyard shots were done there. And you can go and visit this hotel. You can stay there, according to TripAdvisor, $20 a night. If you can if you can get there, just 20 bucks. The reviews basically say that it's really dusty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pretty dusty. But there's a restaurant and there's a bar. Um, they also Dust burgers. They, they reconditioned the place when they shot episode two, Attack of the Clones. They went back to that same hotel, City Driss in Matmata. It's probably just hard to get to is why it's so cheap, I would think. Yeah, but it's pretty cool to say you did that. Maybe we should plan a field trip. And if not to there, then to Moose Jaw and see the tunnels of Moose Jaw. This is in Saskatchewan, Canada. They were constructed in 1908. They're originally just a series of tunnels for a s underground steam system but then they just abandoned it. They, I don't know if it was ever used at all. It was later used by Chinese rail workers to escape persecution, but then in the 20s, it became basically, during prohibition, they used it for rum running. That means give you some alcohol and you run, run through the tunnel. Run in a tunnel mm -hmm. and make sure you don't trip on a moose jaw. You know, it's basically underground alcohol distribution. Also some gambling, some prostitution, some questionable things were happening in moose jaw, moose jaw moose. back in the 20s. Um, but now the city has basically capitalized on this notoriety and restored the tunnels. And in back in June of 20, uh, 2000, they opened it back up as a tourist attraction, the Tunnels of Moose Jaw. Sure, sure. Now this seems like a really awesome thing, right? So I was like, oh, this one you can go to, it's in Canada, it's not too far. But then I go to Yelp and I start looking at the reviews. They got five reviews, two stars. Why weren't the people happy? Well, if you ask Mina, she says, it's incredibly cheesy. I would recommend going with kids as they will hopefully get a kick out of the bad special effects and moving robots, Bad special effects. Or going drunk as we did because then it will seem hilarious rather than pathetic. Well, and that's pretty pathetic. So not exactly a, a ringing endorsement for the tunnels of Moose Jaw, but maybe if they uh, get their act together and make it a little less cheesy, it's, it'll be a cool attraction and we can go on a field trip there. Or we can just go to the beach and dig a big hole. You know, my kids love that. It's not, that's dangerous. You know, oh really? Yeah, you gotta watch out. Okay. You gotta reinforce it. Well, on to Tunisia, that's my vote. <laughs> Let us know in the comments uh, what underground cities you think we should visit. And thanks for liking and commenting.
You know what time it is. Hi, my name is Ronald. I'm from Peru. And this is Cusco. And it's time to spin the wheel of mythicality. If you like miniature horses, well, you're in luck because we post a picture of one of those every Monday on our Instagram. That's Rhett and Link Instagram. Miniature Horse Monday! Click through to Good Mythical Morrow where we discuss the details of why, as kids, we would go into sewer systems. We have reasons. Inspirational speech about donuts. Ladies and gentlemen, glad you all came today for this dual man inspirational donut speech. Listen, life is like a donut, which means it's got a hole of opportunity. And it never ends. That's right, your life never ends. Well, technically you're all gonna die someday, but listen, you need to make the best of that hole in your, in the middle of yourself and fill it with, uh, you know, money and fortune. And, and uh, cars. Cars. Cars especially will really fill that hole in yourself. Yeah, waxy cars, like shiny cars. Red sports cars. Just get in that car and go into the hole of it's your life. A tunnel. Your take, tunnel. Take yeah. your tunnel. <laughs> that take hole, your red that sports hole car it's a through hole that tunnel. hole when it's out of a mountain. Yeah. In, yeah. That's well. Thanks for having us. <laughs> I mean, we must have stunk coming back from that. Man, we stunk all the time back then. We stunk so bad. Dirty all the time. Just nasty.